you wish romance could be so simple? Don't you wish that it would be so easy just to say hello to a pretty girl? Oh, when you're looking for love again, when you're looking for love again, when you're looking for love again. Welcome back everybody to Minecraft The Journey. This is the Let's Play series where we've been upgrading a survival world of Minecraft through all of the versions and exploring the game's history right from the very beginning. Right now we're in beta 1.9 pre-release 2, which is part of the adventure update, a massive upgrade to Minecraft, moving it out of its beta phase and into the Minecraft release era. And this update introduces a whole lot of new mechanics, so many to explore, and today I want to do a few things related to wheat. Can you guess what it is? That's right. I've got to put on my rubber gloves today because we're going out to see if we can breed up some animals. This is going to get messy. That's right, in beta 1.9 pre-release 2, the breeding mechanic is first introduced into the game. This was actually planned for beta 1.8, but because the update was split for being so huge, the animal breeding was held back until beta 1.9, and here it is. So how does this work? Well, what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to feed an animal some wheat and um, let's just see what happens. Um, what just happened? Okay. Anyway, once you feed them some wheat, they'll enter love mode. You'll see some hearts appear above their head and they'll go off and try and find another companion. And if those two like each other, well, you know what happens next. Let's go off and find some different mobs and see exactly what happens. Got a few pigs down here. Now, let's see if I approach this one, you can see that it actually starts to follow me. And this is an interesting new mechanic because it means that I'm now able to manipulate where a mob goes just by having it follow me like this. So if I ever need pigs or some other animal for some reason, I can just have them follow me right across the map. Now, while you two seem happy and comfortable, let's just see what happens if I feed some wheat to you and to you, and suddenly these two need a little bit of privacy because they're about to... Well, oh, there we go. They've created a baby. You're a big looking thing. Now, interestingly, this breeding mechanic is very, very easy. If I just make you two go at it again, um. Oh, you don't seem interested in each other? Maybe you'll find each other? Okay, there we go. You took a little while, but eventually they did like each other. Now, as soon as they've given birth to their new little piglet thing, there we go, I can just make them breed again. And I can do this over and over. There's no cooldown on any of the breeding mechanics, which is interesting because we can just keep going and going and going and going and, um, yeah, um... Parental guidance recommended. Seems like news is spreading fast and everyone wants to go. This should work with every passive mob as far as I'm aware. With the sheep though, I'm curious about one thing. What happens if we breed two of different colors? So let's try this gray one and this black one here and give them a little bit of space so they can do their thing. Um, um, come on now. All right, there they go, there they go. Okay, they're doing their thing. What color baby will they produce? White. And I suspect that every baby will be white. It's just a suspicion that I have. I'll give it a few more tests, but what I wanna do now is go out and test this out on some other mobs and see exactly how many can be bred with this wheat system. Ugh! No, I do keep calling the offspring babies, but they're not really babies because whenever these things reproduce, just like this, they actually produce another adult-sized mob, which means that there really are no babies, at least not yet, but hopefully in the future. The breeding mechanic can also be done uh, indefinitely, as we've seen, so this is going to do wonders for my food production. Notch actually commented on just how outrageous this breeding mechanic was in a tweet of his own. Now, I do hear a lot of chickens around me, which always has me worried, but there are none here, so I suspect that they might be down here under the ground. Now when we terraformed this area, I just sneakily covered up 
what was underneath. Aha, here you are, quite a few of you. I don't know where you all came from, but uh, let's just test you out while we're here. One chicken, two chicken. Do you love each other? You do, but chickens, you're already renewable through your eggs, so this isn't too much of a win. Of course, the last passive mob I want to try is the Mooshroom, because this is an interesting one. If I'm able to bring some Mooshrooms home, I should be able to produce not only a leather farm, not only a beef farm, but also a mushroom soup farm, all in one, if I want to. So let's see if you two will just happily breed, and of course you do, of course you do. So now we have an unlimited amount. Actually, these would also be a mushroom farm, technically, because I can shear them and get mushrooms. What a strange thought process going through my mind right now. But the only way to get these back to our base, unfortunately, is to take them through the overworld because, at the moment, passive mobs do not pass through nether portals. So I think I've got quite a long journey ahead of me. Let me tell you a little about this migration experience. Getting them off the island? Pretty easy. Moving them across the water? Marvellous. 10 out of 10, in fact, they just kept swimming along behind me, all in a line, no problems at all. So I stayed in the water as long as possible, until land. Eventually, I had to do it. And the experience, mm, I'd say two out of 10. They get stuck on blocks, their AI is terrible, they'd lose interest in the wheat and I'd have to go and collect them again. Oh, and what's worse, we picked up hitchhikers. But eventually we got there and my advice, Make sure you have backups. I had to replace one or two of these along the way. But here they are, finally home and locked away in this little pen. Now I just need to decide what to do with them. I think I have made a terrible mistake. These things are so loud. They make so much noise. They wander around and bounce around like this all the time. I think their AI is telling them, oh, I wanna get from here to this block over here, but I don't have a direct path, so I'm just gonna stand here and bounce. Yeah, they're not very smart, but this is the barn, and we have four animal pens here ready to be filled up with some additional creatures. I don't think we need any pigs in here because we have a pig farm right up here, so there's really no point, but we can definitely get some sheep and some chickens and what's the other thing? The other cow, maybe? Maybe it's a bit redundant? Well, we'll see. Is there something I'm missing? I feel like I'm missing another animal. But anyway, yes, so I've been busy here building the barn. I hope you like it. It's quite nice and it's integrated into the rest of the base. So as you walk around across the gangways and such, you can come up here and head around the back here. This is a bit of an unfinished passageway, but it will be finished in the future. And if you wanna go this way, you can just run right through the barn like this and then head off to somewhere else you need to go in the base. So I quite like that. I like everything being all flowy. So, let's head upstairs and get ourselves some more creatures. Oh, this terrain is awful. I managed to move a couple of sheep down and I thought it was gonna be such a hassle to get all of these animals here in the pens. But then I thought, no, this is gonna be really easy. These two were pretty easy, they just followed along. Over here, I've got a couple of these mooshrooms. All I have to do with them is give you a shear and give you a shear, don't you get out. And now we have a couple of cows. Over in this pen, this one's empty, but of course we're gonna put some chickens in here. And all we have to do to do that is get ourselves some eggs. And hopefully by the time we get at least one chicken, there we go, two chickens, that's all we need. Ah, looks like our chaotic elements are no longer possible. Uh, what happened here? Well, up there where the iron bars are, the chicken kind of got stuck inside the same block as the iron bar at the bottom there, that one right there. So I went up and I did some readjustments, freed the chicken and allowed it to start roaming again. And it has been, it's been doing its job properly, but it does look like some of the lava and water mechanics have now changed, resulting in, oh dear, I better shut this thing off before it gets even worse. I'm sorry, buddy. Your job's over. Ah, <sighs> okay, I've got some cleaning up to do. Oh, this is a disaster. Oh no. All done, all done. It's all cleared out and boy, does that look like a lot? It sure felt like a lot. Now, this is where I hope things don't get 
too messy. But here we should have some water and I'm just gonna let that flow first and see what happens. Everything looks fine. Next to it, we've got some lava with some dirt on standby. You never know what could happen here. Okay, everything's looking good. I hear lots of fizzing, but that's what you expect. Hopefully we should have lava flow and water flow happily coexisting. And we do. Whew. Okay, well, I should be able to repair the other one and get this thing back to normal. When these new gameplay mechanics are added to the game, I always think it pays to be thorough with the testing because they're brand new mechanics. There might be all sorts of bugs or quirks or features that we never expected. So I wanted to come and test the breeding out on a few different mob types as well. These pigmen are technically neutral mobs. And what I mean by that is that they're not aggressive towards the player, unless of course you are aggressive towards them. And I'm not gonna do that because um, I don't wanna die right now. But if they are neutral mobs, does that mean that we could possibly breed them? I mean, you are kind of a pig. Let's just see what happens if we right click on this pig man. Ah, uh, sadly, nothing. But there are a couple of other mobs like this we should try. I'm on the lookout for an Enderman. Scourge of the spawnables, an enemy of Minecraft's natural beauty. Just look at what these Endermen have done here, removing all of these blocks and then placing them down in random locations, destroying the natural beauty. Worse than the creeper, I would say, because at least I have to be in the vicinity before it explodes. Uh, I've head out into this area around the back of the base and I'm not sure if it's a good idea. There are so many mobs, but we have found what we came looking for and that's the Enderman. So I'm just gonna head over to this little cheeky chap here and see, oh, oh no, I've aggressed him. Why has he gone aggressive when I fed him wheat? Um, uh, oh, okay, no, I better, I better concentrate here. I'm gonna die, 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 I'm gonna die. Ah! Yep. Oh, what a mess. So over this area, it got me thinking, what about these snow golems up here? Because the snow golems are also technically a neutral mob in that they don't get hostile towards players unless they're aggressed as well. It looks like only one has survived because I remember that, yes, look, there's evidence of death out here tonight, but that's okay because all we need to do is walk up to this snow golem here and see if it'll breed. All right. We'll get out some wheat, which we have here. Oh, wait, wait. What did I do? What did I do? Breed? <gasps> Snow golems go into love mode. That seems to have calmed you down as well. Maybe, maybe, just maybe they'll breed. That would be interesting. Let's have a look. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> that was quite unexpected. Breeding mode seems to make them attack each other. I, I really don't know what's going on here. What's going on here? Well, this has certainly got to be a bug, I'd say. And unfortunately, we can't have you roaming around out here because you're just going to create a total mess. Will you follow me like the pigs do? Come this way. No, you don't follow me. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to lose you and lose the pumpkin on your head because uh, what a mess. But since we have been dealing with some snow golems, I built these little sentry towers. You can see one behind me over there. And I wanted to place some snow golems up here and see if they would keep some of the mobs at bay because they do tend to wander into this area and they're uninvited. Whoops, I've just thrown away my pumpkin. But let's build a couple here and see what happens. I'm pretty confident that they won't last forever, especially with all of the skeleton fire. But if I just place one up here and get out of its way. We've got to put that there to make sure that it doesn't escape because it definitely will try. And we'll place another one over there and see how they get on. Time to find out just how effective these two are. If you're watching this series in real time, then it's currently the end of the year. So if you're planning to visit your family, then have a safe and happy time. Enjoy yourselves and happy new year as well. Oh, and before you go, if you would like to support my channel or support my content creation, then that would be very much appreciated. You can find links in the description below to how to support me on Patreon, or you can click the super thanks button on YouTube, or just come into the Discord and hang out with me there. Before you go though, make sure to check out the DVD extras at the end of this video, a little bit of a behind the scenes peek at how we have to manage some of the problems we find in this survival world. But before I go, thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, I will see you all in the new year.
It's not all fun and games recording Minecraft The Journey. Right now the team are hard at work getting to the bottom of a frustrating issue. Hi, what you working on? Oh, well, since this world gets exposed to a lot of versions, which include all sorts of bugs, sometimes we have to do some maintenance on it just to make sure that things keep working. Right now we're working on this issue where whenever Bugman wanders into these specific chunks, the game just crashes. Here, take a look. See down there in the log files how it says there's a chunk in the wrong location? Yeah, that's pretty common in these older versions. And now just watch what happens when we walk a little bit further. Boom. The whole game just crashes. Unfortunately, Dinnerbone's region calculator tool is down today, so I'm gonna to have to use this Python script instead. Let's convert our broken chunks into coordinates so that we can go off and find them within the world. Now, the first one was chunk minus 49 and minus 84. That tells us that the coordinates are minus 784, minus 1344. So let's go into the world and find that chunk. I've managed to locate this chunk and frankly, I'm quite surprised. The ravine is right over there and you might remember that this mountain here and this mountain here managed to duplicate. This was the original and this one appeared out of nowhere. So I was expecting it to be this chunk here, but in fact, it's this chunk right here and you can tell because the trees have had part of their leaves just squared off and there's some strange floating leaves up there as well. This entire chunk here has reset. This chunk didn't used to look like this because I've been through here before. Now, I think the best thing to do is just go into MC Edit and delete this chunk completely and then let the game regenerate it. Here is our affected chunk. <laughs> this tree looks very much out of place here because it's the wrong tree for the wrong forest. So what we're going to do is select this chunk and it should select just the chunk that we want and it has. So now we'll go down to chunk control and just delete that chunk. If we do that, the next time the game loads this area, it should just regenerate this chunk from scratch. So let's head back into Minecraft and see exactly what happens after, of course, we save these changes. <laughs> well, no time like the present. Let's load up this world and, and see what happens. I think we're inside of this chunk. Everything looks like it's been restored. The trees are normal and exactly what we'd expect. This doesn't look like it's right, but that's because this tree belongs to the neighboring chunk. So it's no surprise that it didn't regenerate. But yes, this looks all normal again. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Look, we actually even have chickens. I'm gonna do the same thing for the two other chunks that were mentioned. Although I'm a bit worried because I feel like those might be inside the ravine. So we might have to take some additional precautions. Oh, goodness me. I just quit the game and reloaded it. And we have thousands and thousands of chickens. This is a known problem. Um, okay, okay. Let's just do a little, oh, but what am I gonna do? Well, my only choice was to use MC Edit to clear out all of the entities in that area over there because the game just wouldn't run. Um, but I managed to kill off a few of them, so at least we won't have a food problem for a while. Now, where were we? That's right, troubleshooting chunks. And it should be no surprise to anyone that the next broken chunk is this one here. I've already dug a hole in it, but you can see this one is an exact copy of the spider farm over there. I don't know exactly when this happened, but this wall here was what I built for the spider farm. And if we peek inside, you can see exactly what's going on as well. Right in here, we have the spawner from over there. And you can also see the game logs are overlaid on the screen. Right now, anytime I try and do anything within this chunk, I get all sorts of bugs. So for example, if I break this block, yep, all sorts of wrong location errors. And that's because anytime I'm mining or doing anything in this chunk here, the game thinks that I'm doing it over there or, or something like that. So what, again, I think we need to do is just reset this broken chunk. And unfortunately, we're gonna lose our weird spawner here, but that's unfortunately a price we need to pay. And things do look quite different now. We've got a cave here, which I don't remember was there before, but I'm sure that this is natural and the way that it should be. I probably have to light this place up a little bit as well because now it's a mob farm, but it's good to have things back to normal again. And this is our third broken chunk and suddenly this all makes sense because this mountain that appeared out of nowhere is a copy of that mountain over there. So this chunk here duplicated itself right here. And again, anytime that I try and do anything in this chunk, I'm getting these very strange wrong location errors all over the place. 
although it's not as bad as the other one for some reason. But we need to reset this chunk too, which was right next to the other one, which was over there. And hopefully by doing this, we will have resolved some of our problems. I'm not entirely sure though. We need to wait and see. And so after a little bit of voodoo in MC Edit, our chunk is gone and we're back. So, oh, just in time for the rain. But as we can see, this chunk has now been reset. Hopefully this will be the last of our problems. I'm gonna go and get rid of this rain somehow and then we're gonna see if the same problem happens to those chunks I was trying to load over that way. Oh, depressing. Well, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Everything seems good so far. So I suspect it might have just been the unloading of those chunks which was causing a problem as I left the area and went to somewhere new. But everything's working again, sheep, so I'm very happy. Ah. <sighs> Okay guys, that's a wrap, see you all next year. All right, and just in time for the office party. Why do they never finish these sets properly? How do I, how do I get down from here? Um, hello? Guys? Oh. I guess I'll see you next year. <laughs>